Right, let's get going here. I think everyone's had a chance to read the risk warning at this stage. I will jump through to the next slide, which is the title of today's presentation, uh, Trading Dolly Yen with Ichimoku Cloud. Now, I've said dollar yen because uh, the Ichimoku cloud originates from Japan, and it's one of the top top three, I would say, indicators used by Japanese traders specifically. So all the yen pairs tend, as a general rule of thumb, to work uh, better with the Ichimoku cloud than other markets. But the principles you'd learn here um, can, in fact, be used by... Um, not only other forex pairs, but also indices, individual shares, and the other asset class you care to mention. The, the principles of use, pretty much like any technical indicator, are, um, are the same throughout. So this is what we'll be looking at today. As you can see this picture, that is how the, uh, the Ichimoku cloud looks on a charting platform. So we'll just talk about what the Ichimoku cloud is how the various lines are calculated and how they end up being plotted on that chart, uh, ways to use it, uh, some examples on the LCG trader platform, and any Q&A if necessary at the end. So what is the Ichimoku Cloud? As I said, it originates from Japan. Um, the full name, uh, easy to butcher, uh, easy to butcher uh, Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. The Japanese translation, which actually makes sense when you um, when you dig into this a bit more, is called the one look equilibrium chart. The idea being that you just look at it once and it covers multiple bases and that you actually, once familiar with it, only really need this as an indicator um, because it, as I said, has kind of multiple characteristics and, and has multiple purposes. Um, so as I say in this introduction, it's uh, an all-in-one indicator designed for trend, direction, support and resistance, momentum and entry signals. So all rolled into one. Uh, it was designed by a Japanese journalist called uh, Goichi Hasada. Um, he developed it in the 30s, I think, but he actually ended up publishing it in 1968. Um, but then it only really became popular outside Japan more recently, I mean, I say recently, last uh, 10 years or so uh, when uh, computerized trading and online trading became very popular and it just made plotting these indicators on the charts and much easier. Um, doing this by hand would be a bit of a dog. But as I said, even now, um, it's very popular in Japan. Um, as I said, it's probably you're talking uh, candlesticks, Heineken Ashi, and then, um, uh, and then the Ichimoku Cloud probably being the top three indicators used uh, by Japanese traders. And Japanese, uh, they trade a lot. They're still, uh, you know, um, trading inside Tokyo still represents a good chunk of um, overall global forex volumes. And I think as a percentage of, of day traders, Japan um, is up there near a third of kind of global volumes. So how to calculate these different lines? So firstly, let's just have a look at what we're dealing with here. So the main bit being the cloud, obviously. Um, so you can see that it changes color. So when it's uh, in our platform, uh, when it's purple, you're looking at a downtrending environment. When it's when it's uh, red, you're looking at the more like the uptrending environment. You know, you can set it to different colors, like a lot of different indicators. Um, the cloud is made up of two lines. There's the leading span A and leading span B. So obviously the, just the difference between those two lines is shaded in to give you that cloud formation. Uh, same with the down move as well as the up move. And obviously it's just when one line crosses over the other that the color changes. Now you have these other lines as well. Uh, the baseline is this kind of longer term average the conversion line is this very close shorter term average of prices. And then you've got this lagging span, uh, which is the price shifted over to the left. Now I'm going to explain all of these a bit more um, in just a moment on the next page. So this is all these indicators in this picture here. This is, as you see, the indicator settings on the LCG trader. And so you can obviously change the time periods um, for uh, and the colors 
for these different elements to the Japanese, um, to the Ichimoku cloud. And so I'm going to just run through those. Now in my chart, I named them the English ones. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're not Japanese, so the English names are going to be a little bit easier to remember. Uh, but if you do really heavily get into this, some people are real massive uh, Ichimoku Cloud fans, you know, then in, in that case, you do tend to respect the original names. But this, um, the conversion line, which if I flick back, you can see is the shorter term red line here. That's a nine period moving average. So just to move an average, but unusually not calculated on the close but it's calculated um, on the midpoints between the high and the low over those nine periods. And obviously that shifts over time. Um, as you go one period in advance, obviously that midpoint shifts somewhat. And you can, just as a by the by, uh, when you're talking about a midpoint of two periods, it's just the high and the low divided by two. So it, when it's just two um, pieces of data, obviously the midpoint's actually the same as the average. Now you have the baseline, uh, so if we jump back to this chart here, that's the longer term, uh, which kind of lags the price a little bit further behind it, um, called the baseline. Uh, and that's, that's very much the same thing, a 26 moving average, period moving average uh, calculated on the midpoint. Now the cloud, as I said, is made up of these two leading lines. Um, so I didn't mention the Japanese names before, but yeah, the Tenkin Sen is the conversion line, Kijun Sen, uh, the baseline, the cloud, otherwise known as Akumo, um, that's made up of two lines, and obviously, as I said, they're filled in uh, to form that cloud visual cue that you get on the chart. Um, but the leading line A, the Senku Span A, as it's called in Japan, um, calculated by the midpoint between the two previous lines. So these are the conversion line and the baseline, the midpoint between those two lines. And then interestingly, and what makes all the difference here is that it shifted 26 periods forward, so to the right. So you can see just the difference between these two lines is then shifted over to the right to kind of give you that um, original sense of the price action, but kind of mirrored forward so that um, as we'll talk about in a minute, uh, you're basically getting that little kind of uh, reflection of past price action at the current moment of time. And then the leading line B, same idea again, calculated by the 52 period midpoint, and then again shifted by the 26 period. So you can see that they don't, um, these are not uh, moving in sync with each other. It's kind of more like this is almost like a, um, Another one you could add here, so this being 9, this being 26, um, uh, and this one being <clears throat> 52, but it's shifted 26 periods in advance. So, it's, And you'll notice that all these numbers, they seem a bit random, but actually uh, the same numbers used in the MACD uh, indicator. So there obviously is something to this 9, 26, uh, 52. And then the other one is this lagging span, uh, uh, otherwise known in Japan as the Chiku span. It, I mean, it's it's um, not used by everyone, um, but what this is is just this um, this brownish line here. I actually changed the color. I think our default to yellow, which is good on a black background in your chart, but if you switch it to uh, to white, it's very hard to see. Um, you can see here the default here is this yellow color. Yeah, it looks nice on the black, uh, which is good for trading, not so good for demonstrating charts. Um, it's, it's the price as you see it, but not as candles, but as a line chart, this time shifted back 26 periods. So very much a kind of different idea, a different take on, um, uh, on support and resistance, not drawing horizontal lines in here, um, but actually using the price action itself, either shifted forwards or backwards. And so the idea being that once the price catches up with um, the way the price was acting um, 26 periods ago, um, then in fact maybe it's facing a little short-term period of weakness. So you can see as the price comes up and interacts with that um, lagging span line, the price dips a bit but it's oftentimes a bit of a kind of um, early entry signal. And I'll talk about a bit more about this when we actually get onto the platform and see some examples. 
any questions at all about how to set this up in the LCG trader, obviously, uh, shoot me a question now, or if you're watching the recording later, just uh, please feel free to leave a comment. Now, how to use it? This is the uh, this is the key, right? This is what we're all interested in. Calculations. You know, it's good to know what you're dealing with, but ultimately, you just need to know how to use it. Um, as with most technical indicators. So this is this is why this indicator is good. I mean, it's not something that I use in my day-to-day -day trading, but um, every so often I come across a, um, a trade someone else is involved in based on the Ichimoku, and it does pique my interest again, um, because it is such a, um, uh, a unique and sort of um, uh, multiple purpose, as I've already said, um, indicator. So number one, determining the trend, and so this really is absolutely key. A lot of the a lot of the way this indicator is formed is using sort of moving averages, and just like moving averages, um, this indicator is pretty much useless in a sideways trading environment. Um, luckily, it's quite easy to see just based on the the, the colors of the chat of the cloud. Um, if they're just constantly changing color you know, that's your kind of visual cue that we're in, not in a trending environment and that those signals are to be ignored. But inevitably, like any trend following indicator, you'll get a few false starts um, as a trend that doesn't in fact develop and it stays in a range bound environment. That's just nature of the beast. Um, but when you are in a trending environment, it's very good at what, telling you what that trend is and getting you um, a good clear signal somewhere around the beginning of the trend. Now I'd say part of the kind of concept of this indicator, if we go back just having a look at the, um, the, the, the picture of it again, is that obviously say price bottomed over here you know, around the kind of 26th of March or so, it wasn't over till, uh, and this is a daily price chart, it wasn't over till the 13th of May or so that actually the, um, uh, the color changed. So there's clearly a huge lag here from the bottom of the market to uh, where these indicators change. But that is the same uh, with all trending indicators. You're not getting in at the bottom. What you're trying to do when you're trend trading is capture that middle 80%. Um, and equally, uh, you know, if you're using, uh, you know, if you're looking for uh, when the price rolls over, um, it will, you know, say if you've already been short during this period, you know, the you could have taken your profits right here at the bottom, but you don't get out at the bottom. Again, you get out much later, uh, but the idea being that there's been enough of a trend for you to capture that key, easier to grab middle bit of the trend, not the, uh, that kind of middle 80% or middle 60%, if you like, and not the 20% at the top and the bottom. Um, so general general rule to follow when you're using this, when the price is above the cloud, uh, we only want to be long. Uh, when the price is below the cloud, uh, we only want to be short. Uh, and then the, the extra thing to add on top of that is, as I said before, uh, when the, in our LCG trader platform, when the color is purple is when you want to be short. Sure, when, when the color is red, you want to be long. For momentum, um, what we're doing here is very much a similar concept with moving averages and even just the raw price itself. The angle of that shorter term period moving average gives you a sense of the momentum. So if, if that short term moving average suddenly really points vertically, you know that price is absolutely taking off and this is not time to wait for some huge pullback. Uh, this is the time to jump in with that stronger momentum. If the, the angle of that uh, short term moving average is a lot um, shallower, then you know the trend is a bit weaker and you're going to get kind of bigger pullbacks and so you don't want to be jumping in on new highs necessarily, you want to be waiting for that shallower trend to kind of um, uh, resume itself uh, with, you know, via a pullback. Uh, and so that can, that can basically just determine, you know, how um, aggressive you are with your entries based on the, the strength of momentum in the market. So number three, you've got support and resistance. So I was starting to talk about this a bit before, but basically the idea being that the cloud can act as a dynamic form of uh, zone of support and resistance. And so 
it's a zone of support during uptrends and a zone of resistance during downtrends. So not only is it telling you whether you should in fact be uh, buying or selling, but it's telling you if the price price drops down into um, there is a obviously back to this cloud again. When we get a situation like this, where the price is pulled back into the cloud, um, this is telling us that we're towards the um, you know obviously at this point we're towards the end of the trend. So um, you get one first piece of information where yes, we hit the cloud and we pull back. But then you can see we come back down to the um, to the conversion line, and and then we actually start to rally up through the cloud here. And then this is your indication over here when we break out the other side of the cloud that actually the the trend is shifting. Um, but you can see there it's initially acting as that area of actual support, um, and even in the middle of the cloud again a bit more resistance in line with these peaks over here. And then you can see this giant pullback in the price was well, looking very, if you were live trading, you'd be thinking this looks quite ominous, but actually you have that cloud and it dips just before the cloud and, and rallies up again here, dips into the cloud and then rallies again. And then here you can see the price is kind of pulling back to those old lows and then in line with the, with, with the cloud as well. And uh, for, oh, I've, got, I've got two threes here, um, that should be number four, the entry trigger. So that involves the, the base and the conversion line, so again going back to our chart here. We're in a downtrending environment here, uh, we're looking for short term trading opportunities, uh, shorting the market. Uh, but then um, it's only until uh, so, for example, here you can see the um, conversion line breaks up through the uh, the baseline, but because we're in a downtrending environment, you don't take that as a signal to go long. And obviously, with the uh, with the benefit of hindsight, you can say, well, actually, that would have been a nice signal to capture the bottom of the market. But obviously, we're trying to stay in line with the general trend. You'll get many little signals like that. Um, but the trend will then roll over and continue again. The idea in this case being that, um, okay, the, the, the market moves up, it could just be a pullback within the downtrending environment, uh, but actually we get a little drop back down, a short-term pullback where the, um, where the conversion line drops below the baseline, and then it's at this point here when there's a crossover again while we're in that now confirmed uptrending environment via the cloud, it's at this point that we again would uh, then go long the market. And then uh, obviously there's many different take profit points, uh, take ways to take profit. But again, you've not got in right at the bottom of the pullback, but you've waited for some confirmation by the crossover, and then you ride the market up while the uh, conversion line's above the baseline, and then finally, uh, the um, you don't get out at the top, but when the conversion line drops below the baseline, that's your, your signal to to exit the market. So again, you haven't got in here and you haven't got out there, but you've captured this little chunk in the middle, um, which uh, you know when you're trading on a daily chart, this is a bit of a sluggish looking trend. I'll show you uh, on the live charts in a minute, a bit of a better example, but still nonetheless. Uh, you're jumping in around, uh, what's it, 109.85 is it, um, and then getting out around 111.72, uh, so uh, you are capturing close to 200 pips, um, so obviously a nice chunky little trade there, for, um, what was that, 10th of June to around the 20th of July, so talking about three weeks, little 200 pip trade uh, from a daily chart perspective obviously <clears throat> so let's jump over to the LCG trade platform I won't drag this out um, unnecessarily but we'll just have a couple of just have a look at it live in the platform so here is that same dollar yen obviously I was using and we've been talking about um, the title of the webinar is dollar yen how to use it for dollar yen as I mentioned you can use it in other markets as well 
Um, we've already talked at length about this particular chart, so we can also jump over to, to pound yen, and you can see that the pound is absolutely plummeting at the moment. <clears throat> and uh, interesting, we had a, um, a little crossover of the um, uh, of the pound up here, uh, but we were still above the cloud at that point. But with the market breaking through the other side of the cloud, uh, now we had a little crossover lower down, a brief little cross here uh, with this little area of consolidation. And then while in this downtrending environment, you know, we had got the crossover the cloud here, you would have jumped in with the momentum. Uh, and that was around 145. And you can see we're down at around 142.75. And so this is a one hour chart. Um, the pound yen can be a very volatile trade. Uh, you know, a bit of Brexit worries for the pound at the moment. Uh, and so uh, you've literally, um, with the benefit of hindsight, obviously, um, looking at where did I say we jumped in uh, here. 145.25 down to 142.75. Uh, 75 so again 250 odd pips but this time um, it was in the space of about five days and you can see um, you know this uh, you know you're judging the momentum this obviously this uh, the the red line very much um, at this point in time you can see with the price diving the momentum line showing strong momentum and then you could see this blue line um, a bit further away from the price action giving you a nice strong signal of a downtrend uh, the colors colors of the cloud are futures areas of resistance uh, when the momentum of the the move slows down a bit you can see the first sign of um, the momentum slowing is when we hit um, <coughs> hit our as we um, we showed over here in the in the platform just like in this example but works slightly better here when we hit that lagging span line we uh, we then get the first sign of momentum slowing and then actually at that point we get the price clipping um, the the cloud as an area of resistance in a downtrend and it perfectly worked on this occasion and if you just jumped in on that clip, maybe wait for the uh, some confirmation uh, with a downward candlestick even, 144.13 uh, down to 142.74, you know, in just the space of about five hours, um, you, you know, you captured about 50 odd pips there. 150 odd pips even. So um, some, some, when, you know, obviously it's a trending indicator, um, I showed you a quite sluggish trend on dollar yen and you can see that um, if you had followed the rules okay uh, you could have captured a slow 200 pips over a few over a few weeks um, if you're in a much fast moving uh, short-term trend um, and it's a fast trending environment then there are opportunities um, you know it could have been very aggressive on the break of the cloud or you could have waited for the later crossover but either way there were some uh, quick profits to be made because it's a trending environment and this indicator is designed for trends. Uh, when it's a choppy sideways environment, uh, less so. Uh, if you're looking for where to find it, most of the time it's just easier just to right click on the chart in the LCG Trader platform. And you can see if you go under indicators and then just go to other, here it is, the Ichimoku Kinku Hayo. Um, and then here are our options here in terms of changing colors, um, which time frames you want it to display on. Uh, and then, as we said, the various time periods, but it is defaulted uh, to the kind of normal settings as you would typically use it. And given that that, particularly when you're trading dollar yen, and you know the uh, the Japanese, as a rule, will follow the default settings. You know, from in terms of a kind of crowd behaviour and um, uh, that sort of idea to technical indicators, that idea that they're almost self-reinforcing prophecies because everyone's looking at it, so that it does as you would expect. From that perspect. I don't think it's better to use those the default um, default settings, but you can change them if you want. So I think I'm going to uh, leave it at that today. Thank you very much for attending. Hope you uh, learned a little bit on the Ichimoku, and it's um, you know it's not something you have to completely convert towards, but um, even if you cut out. 
uh, the, the lagging line as some people do or even just leave the cloud in there it can sometimes complement uh, the trading you're doing particularly if you are a trend following trader um, it can be a very nice visual clue to follow to make keep you on the on the right side of the market and uh, even give you a few entry signals here and there well thank you everyone thanks for attending good luck with trading for the rest of the week it's uh, Jasper signing out